<laughs> oh Ma, how you doing man? Good evening, good afternoon. Good evening, good evening, yeah, good evening. Listen, good, first you. of all, congratulations man, what a, an amazing piece of work. Well, thank Straight you. Straight in, no messing about. Yeah, well, you know, I, I don't like to do anything half cocked and um, it's all about evolution. Um, and I, I my brother on this part of the journey, um, helping out really. You know, we worked before on... Scratch, on, Scratch yeah, Professor. The, Scratch Professor. He might be listening now, he might not, you know, might be sleeping. He does one of them really weird jet lag things. Oh, right. the night Body clocks all over the place. Oh, it's, it's ridiculous. But as long as he keeps coming up with beats, mm. um, like what you, you, you hear on the album, then I, I can't really complain. All right, well, listen, uh, first of all, let's step back um, and play some of your classics that you've done before this album's got. Uh -huh. Let's have a, a little look at your work so far, some of it. <laughs> did I do that? You did all them. <laughs> Haven't even really brushed the surface, have we? Do you no. know what I mean? So many big tunes That's that you've done. That's a smidgen, I think. That's just it. a smidgen, man. But you know, just if anyone has been living under a cave for the last, I don't know, 20 odd years and you haven't heard any of those tunes, well, there you go. That's uh, what my man's responsible for. And then some. So, congratulations, like I said, you've got the Thank album you. dropping tomorrow. tomorrow. How does it feel? Are you excited? I am, actually. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, it's been uh, quite phenomenal, the, the response, um, just from the little snippets we've been putting up. Um, and you know, I think it's because of the the, um, the technology and, and the, the, the futuristic state that we live now. Yeah. So it's much 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 easier for people to hear my stuff before it's out. Um, you know, when I started started out back in the day, you only had your radio ones and your, your, your ITVs or your top of the pops, and certain things where you could hear that music. Or you know what I mean? You you you'd have to go for mainstream. That's what you, that's where you you'd go to listen to. It. Yeah. Whereas now people can listen to my music anywhere. <laughs> and um, it's made such a difference, I think. It makes, it, I think it's made such a difference to the music industry as a whole. So the technology side of things, you know, with the improvement of it all, it's made a, a difference for the better for you. Because uh, some, some people say it's derogatory to them because, you know, you know, all their stuff gets leaked and, you know, uh, bootlegs and loads and things like mm. that, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, I've heard uh, that before, but it's kind of like you, you have to weigh up what's your, you know, everything's changing. Everything changed in the first place, like when we had cassettes, you know, the, double cassette tapes of yeah. people were like recording off the radio or making their own little compilations. I mean, obviously the quality was a bit down then, but still people were doing it then. Yeah. So they're going to do it now. But it's whether you want people to hear your music, if it's about that, or you just out there to make the almighty dollar. Yeah. I saw a thing on South Park where this kid downloaded something for free. And the guy said, he said, right, come here. And he, said, he showed this guy at Lincoln Park who sat in his mansion crying. He goes, why is he crying? He goes, because he can't build that second swimming pool next to this tennis court because you downloaded it for free. <laughs> you know? I mean? yeah, yeah. And that's kind of the the the, the, the mindset which I kind of I'm evo I'm avoiding that you know the reason why I make music because I enjoy it mm -hmm. and I enjoy it when people enjoy my music you know that's the main thing. So do you use it to your advantage? Do you kind of spill things or leak things out purposely so you can sort of judge how it's if it's going to stick or you know if you should move on and make some other? No, music? not really. I'm not there to try and get any sort of voting points or anything. I mean, people, mm -hmm. if you go back through my Instagram, you'll be able to see like the the seedlings and the germ the germlings of, of of certain songs on this album. Mm -hmm. Like from the that from the drum beat, from the chords, from the melody that I was doing. We could see where it started from, and so I kind of took them on a journey, you know what I mean? But it's not its not for approval, no. Because no. I'm an artist, man, I have to express myself and this is how I express myself, through the music. I'm gonna say, uh, I don't know if you remember, probably not actually, you may or may, but you uh, supported, support, you've done a track with uh, Natasha Watts, which is on the album, yes. Insatiable, mm. and I saw you um, doing the track with her when she did her gig at Under The Bridge. Yeah. And when you came off stage, you, we had a little chat for about two minutes and you went to me man I've got some tunes coming I've got a project coming and you were really excited about it then yeah, I was like well yeah. as soon as it's ready yeah. well I didn't know it was going to turn out like that well nor did I <laughs> <laughs> to be quite honest you know every time I make an album I'm grateful for the fact that I've been given another bunch of inspiration to come up with all this different kind of music yeah and you know when you start it in a demo form it's, it sounds like a, a certain way but i just i just had something in my head that went right now you're ready let's mm -hmm. do the album now so i started to mix i started to put on the extra stuff like the horns the strings um harp um extra vocals and things and i was just blown away by the sound that was coming at me then mm -hmm. you know i don't see myself as this is me doing it there's somebody controlling me back there with the strings. You know what I mean? Telling me what to do. I'm like a vessel, right. which, you know, where the expression goes through. So I'm as, as amazed as anybody else when I'm listening back to it. And especially when I'm listening back to this album, you know, start to finish. You, I take you on a journey, you know, and I, I'm, I'm hoping that people will, will get that. You're hands-on as well, because you do 
pretty much all the production yourself. I know you got your brother Scratch Professor to yeah, I don't yeah. know if he does the beats for you or how, how yeah, it works yeah, between I mean, you. Yeah, yeah, he's you he's play a, most things. Yeah, bass, drums, and keys is what I do, and I do the string arrangements, the horn arrangements, um, pretty much everything. You know, you got to be in control yeah. uh, of my stuff, man. <laughs> yeah. So I mean. Just uh, 2013, you had The Man, mm. that came out, that album, before that, was, I think it was six, seven years before that. Seven years seven before Seven years that before one. that you had I Want It, you know, Sing If You Want sing It. Sing If You Want It, yeah. Sing If You Want It. So, <laughs> um, how does it feel, you know, the difference in putting this record out now, or for tomorrow, compared to then with those two? Well, uh, I'll tell you what, the difference is, is the buzz, you know. Uh, we had Facebook back then, we had Twitter back then, but now I'm seeing a lot more people like latched onto it and tweeting about this album and how excited they are and the thing is as well it's worldwide that's the thing about it man you're getting tweets from, from argentina chile um uh, mexico venezuela um, it's just ridiculous where it's come from japan china um you name it it's coming in and uh I, i'm really grateful for that you know 33 years i've been doing this you know and every time i finish an album i'm like Right, that's it, I'm spent. What am I going to do next? <laughs> but sitting in the studio with my brother from day to day, and then he does a thing, and he just makes a beat that makes me respond. And uh, I come up with a melody, and then and then on top of that, I've got to do the like the little string arrangements. And then he goes back, and then he cuts it up, and he's like, uh, it's just, uh, it's something magical. And to, and to do it in your own studio as well. Mm. Give thanks for that, man. I built that in 2003, because I kept moving around from uh, from label to label. And I was like, you know, what's the, what's the main thing I need to get out of this? And first thing I said to myself is a studio. Mm -hmm. You need a base to work from. You need, if you're going to create stuff, then you can go and create. And then w just deal with everything else after that. You know, whether it's sales or whatever, that's, you know, the main thing is to be able to create music without having to worry about the bills. And Foundation. the light getting shut off and all that. Mm -hmm. yeah, man. Yeah. Back a yard. Back on my yard. Back a yard. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, um, You've already spoken about collaborating with your brother, Scratch mm. Professor. Mm. Um, some amazing collabos on there. You've got Robert Glasper, which we're playing right here on My Soul. Uh, Ty, Flow Assist. We're going to play um, the track that we first got um, from this project, barring you know, the EP that came mm -hmm. in the last year. We're going to play Gave My Heart. And uh, this tune, I, this is just a ridiculous record. Like I said, the whole album's sick. Mm. But when I heard this, what? I took my head <laughs> off, man. So let's play this one. Omar, the legend in the house. Let's get into this one. Gave My Heart, featuring the great Leon Ware. This is my soul. My soul family is out tomorrow. Less than 24 hours to wait. In fact, midnight. Midnight Download tonight. From midnight yeah. tonight. Go yeah, get yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. That is called Vicky's Tune, taken from the album Loving Beats. Robert Glasper and Ty featuring on this one. You know, I started this one. Home. I started this one back um, when I built my studio, and uh, it was 2003. This track. This track. It's the same bass line, same drums. Yeah. Um, but I just kind of like put it away, tapped it away, left it in the vineyard to, to ferment or yeah, yeah, get you know, mature, mature, or mature whatever, yeah. Whatever it is. Um, and I'm glad I did it when I did because if I hadn't, then I wouldn't have had Mr. Glasper or Ty. Uh, feature man, you know what I mean? So everything had, had, had its moments. Absolutely, sometimes you just gotta wait for the right time. Exactly. And now's the right time, okay. And before uh, the break, of course we played Gave My Heart, which features the amazing Leon Ware, done so many uh, classics, not just solo, but obviously alongside the likes of Marvin Gaye as well. Minnie Ripperton, Minnie Michael Ripperton, Jackson. Absolutely, and uh, gave us, that's why I came to California, Rocking it's, Eternally. I knew this dude for a whole full year before I knew what he actually did. It, Minnie was just hanging out in LA and just having a laugh, jokes mm. and stuff. Mm. And then I went to a place called the Roxy with him, and it was like that scene in Goodfellas when they walked through the kitchen. And they go right, right up to the front of the stage and they part all the, the, the other tables and they give you that front seat. Right. I'm like, who is this dude? <laughs> Gerald Albright on stage shouting out to Leon Ware. I'm like, okay, maybe <laughs> somebody special. And then it comes out, uh, Minnie Ripperton, Marvin. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing, you know? So I'm very grateful to have um, known this guy and worked with him. So that's why I'm sending out my, my utmost love mm. and strength to him right now, you know. Wish him well, man. Yeah, Wish him well. Absolutely. Get better soon. And uh, so, how did the, the collaboration start? How did you meet him? Like, as in to to, to, to work with him? Well, to to uh, initially, it was I was singing for a mid M festival, Marvin Gaye tribute. Right. And he was the MD for the band. Oh, and okay. I was singing. I can't remember which song I was singing, but he was like, "Oh, yo, man, I like this stuff, man." I'm like, "Okay, well, you know, that's cool, man. Let's just hang." And, uh, <laughs> 
There is a story that I could tell you, but I can't tell you because it's drive time and there's probably children at home. Okay. Which is very good and very pertinent to what I'm talking about. But it's very fun. And me and him just clicked from then on, you know. Um, he actually sang on a track on mine. On oh, which album was this now? Uh, number four, This Is Not A Love Song. Right. He's got a track on there that uh, me, my brother and him worked on before. Um, but it was like, you know, we have to do something else. And, you know, Rocking You Eternally. That is going to be my favourite Bad tune. Leon Ware tune. We'll play that later. Well, he gave me the master, masters. And so my brother cut the strings up, put a beat on it. I wrote a song. And what you're hearing is the kind of like the, fun, the finished result. Because um, I said to him, look, man, I've written the song here. Can you sing this bit for me? He's like, oh, yeah, man, no problem. And with technology as it is these days, he just sat, sent over his bits um, over the internet. I put him into the track yeah. and you know. So that is actually rocking you totally cut up and spliced. It and... kind of is, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you know, you would never know how. No, you wouldn't. You, you wouldn't. Never I mean, know I know, that. I love that tune. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I heard um, Leon Ware back in the day, maybe still. Uh, I know he's not well, so sending all my love to him. But mm. I heard he was a bit of a, a ladies' man. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that through the great. Well, the thing is, is that he, he started doing a lot of his album covers naked. And uh, <laughs> I think that points you in the right direction. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Right, with some of the other collabos on there, we've spoken about Leon now and uh, Robert Glasper. Uh, we just played Vicky's tune. I mean, another amazing artist doing big things out there. Well. Yeah, I, nice. I went to see him recently at the uh, Cocos mm. and this is with the experiment. And my gosh, what a performer! I've seen him um, uh, with his trio. Yeah, as well. Johnny I mean, Scott's, yeah. He's just so versatile. And I was like, man, could you please do a solo for me on, on something? I wasn't even sure what it, what it was. Mm. And I thought, okay, Vicky's tune. So I sent that to him. And it took a year before I got it back. And he was like, oh, man, did you like it? I was like, yeah, yeah, sure. Wicked, wicked. <laughs> and he took I you a year. Listen, I didn't listen to the track. <laughs> you get me? But Because I, I was that confident that what he what he yeah, would do yeah. would be fantastic. And right. and you know, I was right. Look what, you know, what yeah. he does. And Ty is spitting over that fast over that track as well. It's amazing. Mm. Yeah. He's got some diction, that guy. Yeah, it's man. amazing. He That's why so I'm glad that I got him on the track as well. Wicked. Um, so the, like the, the other uh, collaborations on there, Natasha Watts, we've spoken about Natasha, mm. Flow Assist as well. Flow, flow assist, yeah. You know, uh, I keep telling her that uh, I went to a flow tree gig at the Jazz Cafe maybe about 10 years ago, and that was one of my favorite gigs of mm -hmm. all time. Mm -hmm. I did like top top five, top 10 mm -hmm. easily because she's got such a control with the with the crowd. Yeah, I'm um, very funny, very articulate as well. And when we were putting that track together, which is another one we started maybe 2007 2009. Um, when when you know the production was coming together and the arrangements were starting to flow then we saw like we can hear spoken word over that and who yeah. who better to, to, to do the spoken word than Florissa? She's the go to. Absolutely.